Hi, this is Dave, fellow running guide. This is a follow up video to navigation task 26, where I just wanted to discuss attack points and catching features and the use of altimeters to find your destination. And this is based on some of the choices that people made in response to the task. So, a um, quick scenario we're looking for the tiny little pond at B, but we're doing this in the dark, so visibility is really limited. You have to get very, very close to that feature before you found it. Um, so what is an attack point? What do we mean by that? I'd think about it as being a point that you can get to where you definitely know where you are from where you can then take um, a compass bearing on the map from where you are to your destination, and measure the distance and then walk on that compass bearing, counting your paces until you get there. Obviously, it's important to be able to know how many paces you take for 100 metres on different types of terrain rather than just walking on a compass bearing and hoping you get there without knowing how far you've gone. So that's an attack point and obviously the closer your attack point is to your destination the more likely you are to find that destination. Some attack points that people suggested were coming on this path here and get to the boundary there and start from there, walk on a bearing from there. So let's have a look at that one to start with. So that distance is 390 metres, 380 metres to the pond. So first question would be, can you accurately walk counting your paces uphill steeply and then less steeply for 380 metres. And also you're going at an angle to the contours there, so you're not going straight up the contours. So there's a tendency that you might get pushed off leftwards and miss that pond to the west. Um, the other thing is look at what the contours do there's no what you might call catching feature there. We'd be expecting to be going uphill, uphill, uphill. And then if we miss that pond, we're still going uphill. So the change of angle of the ground doesn't tell us to stop. We might be up here before we realise we've gone too far if you weren't accurately pacing it. So you might get lucky or you might be able to count your paces, but I'd be um, a bit reluctant to use that. What about shortening the distance and using this wall corner here as an attack point? So let's try that. So going in from there, much shorter, 280 metres. But again, we've got no change of angle of the slope beyond our destination. We'd expect to be going uphill, uphill, uphill. And if we missed it slightly, to the east this time, we'd still be going uphill. So again, there's nothing to tell us that we've gone too far in terms of the shape of the ground. But you could use that. What about going even further up and getting to the end of this wall line here and using that as an attack point? So let's try that. So distance in from there is only 150 meters, much shorter, and much more likely to be able to accurately estimate how far we've gone on that one. But the other thing about this is look at the contours, look at the gradient, we'd be expecting to be going uphill, uphill, and then just as the ground flattens out, that is where our pond should be. So that's really gonna help us prevent us from overshooting because we know if we're walking along the flat, then we should be at our pond. So probably no more than 30 metres on the flat, the pond should be there. So that would really prevent us from going out along there. So I think that's um, a good choice of attack point there. Other people discuss coming up and using this stream and possibly wall as an attack point. So that would work quite well. The thing with streams is 
sometimes it's quite quite hard to know exactly where they finish you might get in some wet ground here and not know if that's on the stream or not you could use the end of that wall or that wall corner or the, sorry the bend in the wall there so some people use that let's have a look at that one from there in just short of 200 meters so again not too far to walk on a bearing counting paces but again look at the contour detail we'd be expected to be going up uphill, uphill uphill and then immediately we hit the pond the ground flattens out so at no point on this journey should we be walking on the flat so if we missed it slightly to the west and we flatten out that's that alarm that catching feature we've gone too far so that would work quite well final one some people talked about going around and using the head of this stream and the end of this ditch here so we can look at that distance 220 meters so not too far but again look at the contours we'd be expecting to be going downhill 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 to the pond but if we miss it slightly still going downhill so the shape of the ground doesn't act as a catching feature maybe not until you notice it starting getting steeper here so I'd be wary of that one maybe so quite a few different options this wall end and this wall bend give us better attack points because they're close quite close to the destination but we've got a catching feature the shape of the ground changes if we overshoot so that's those finally a quick chat about altitude or using an altimeter to help you get in there some people suggested we could look at your watch um, and see when it says 430 meters and come in on this contour here so have a look at that 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 will work if your altimeter is absolutely spot on but imagine that it was just two meters out and you thought you're at 430 meters and you're actually at 432 meters so you come along here you come along here you think you're on the 430 contour but you're not you're actually slightly higher and remember it's night so even though you're walking eastwards expecting to get your feet wet it's night you may not see it and you don't realize until you get to here when the ground starts dropping away that you've missed or overshot but you don't know whether your altimeter is reading inaccurately too high or too low so you don't know whether you're a bit lower down and you've overshot coming along here so yeah in in better visibility looking for better features that altimeter might work but on a black night looking for a tiny feature like that unless you know it's absolutely spot on accurate you might find that um, it doesn't work so those are just a few things from people's comments and choices um it's always good to have a, have a look at them and uh, dig down a little bit deeper into their thoughts so hope hope that was useful look out for another of these navigation tasks